Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Preview for Friday, the 17th of October, 2014. Hope you're having a great trading week. It has been uh, unusual to say the least. We've had some great days and some uneventful days, I would say. Uh, not that uh, that's bad. We don't want to do anything that's going to get ourselves in trouble when the market's going crazy like this. But certainly, uh, I've seen. Uh, some unusual things this week, I would say, overall, including the last two days where we've gotten big gaps, not just because of the market volatility, but also because of earnings. We are in the core eight days of earnings, lasts until next Thursday. We do uh, constantly remind people that that's sort of a different environment. Everything's affected by, for example, yesterday, Netflix gapping down 100 points in the aftermarket after their earnings. So here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. Uh, you can see that we had another day where we went down, uh, you don't see the gaps on here because this is a continuous contract that trades 24 hours a day. Uh, but you can see that we did gap down. If you want to look at the spiders, you get a clearer uh, look at what happens. We actually opened way down at the low of the session and rallied. So two days in a row we've come back from the brink, but both times ever had gap down quite a bit. Here's a look at the index. This is the NASDAQ index. Same deal, gap down. Which I'll show you something interesting on the NASDAQ side when we go to uh, the intraday action. So at the end of all of it today, what was the result? The S&P closed plus 0.27. Can't make that up. Not even a point after gapping down like that. NASDAQ lost 20 points or so, 21 points. SOX was up 8, uh, breaking out of the highs of the last three days. Biotech index also curled back up. This thing found support at that red static trend line and has not really even broken down considerably uh, yet. Here's a look at Google lost another three or four points. And Apple lost about a point. Uh, the VIX came back a bit today. I wouldn't uh, get too excited about too excited about that, though. That may uh, continue higher at some point here. And here's a look at uh, crude oil once again, um, dipping down. Actually, this doesn't include today's, but it actually rebounded a little bit. For some reason, today's bar is missing, so it should be at about $83 a barrel. For the close, which is still down nicely over the last few months for crude oil, uh, gold was down a couple, too. Uh, all right, let's look at the intraday action. We're going to start with the NASDAQ futures. And what I want to show you here is if you go back and look at yesterday's close, remember the futures trade for 15 minutes after the stock market closed. So the last three bars that you see here were three big blue bars right before the gap down to start uh, Thursday the 16th. So those three are in the aftermarket. That's when Netflix tanked. And then we came in the morning to a big gap down. And you can see that we came up and filled the, the gap in the futures. But what's interesting about that is if you just look at the NDX index, um, which would not include those three bars down in the post market yesterday, uh, that's the actual close of the stock market. You can see that here, right? So there were three bars down after that in the futures after the stock market closed. So here you get this big gap down, and then you rally, and look how basically all you did is make it back to fill the highs of the, uh, the gap from the day. The high of the day is basically just the gap fill. So all of that was basically just to fill the gap. That's all we did today. Here's a look at the uh, uh, the S&P E-mini futures. So this came up, filled the gap fairly early. Uh, there was a lot of wild swings in the futures here in the first hour of play. And then uh, filled the gap early, pushed a little higher. And, and again, the high of the day here is at 1870, but that's the point where the NASDAQ cash index filled the gap. That's the last thing that needs to fill. Once that happened, we rolled back over and uh, believe it or not, after all that, we closed right on the VWAP, 1850. Now, let's take one more look at the NASDAQ futures because there's an important point to be made here, which is that despite what we would call perceived volatility today, the NASDAQ side traded entirely inside of the prior day's action. What that means, of course, is that the low of the day is above the low of the prior day, and the high of today is below the high of the prior session. So even though we had this big gap down, we recovered, we filled the gap, and there was some crazy volatility early that was almost, uh, let's say, high risk, we still only traded inside the prior day's range. So it's what we call a measuring day for the market. And of course, now we're heading into options expiration. This is just a single expiration on Friday. Somewhere in here, I have to believe that with all this movement, we've unwound the options. Just be aware that this does leave the market the most exposed. A lot of market crashes occur either the Friday or Monday of options expiration. Obviously, a lot of times in October. And obviously, when the market looks about like it does right now, from a daily chart formation, again, I'll pull this back up and show you. Here's the daily. You know, this is this is the beginning of where crashes look like. Crashes can occur after that. Are we going to get a crash? Hard to say. 
you know, obviously this Ebola stuff's playing a role. We've got earnings coming out. Uh, we've got some concerns about the election and stuff like that. So hard to say if it's going to turn into a significant crash or not. Uh, but we're certainly set up for the possibility, unlike most times of the year, you know, you don't just crash off the highs. So uh, be very cautious. And again, anything that starts to show the market rolling to the downside, I would be long nothing. Make sure you're playing the short side because that can get fast quick. We definitely want to take advantage of that if it happens. But, you know, options expiration Friday usually is dead. I don't know that it's going to be possible for it to be dead today or uh, this coming tomorrow, given the fact that uh, so much is going on in the market. But we will call it as we see it. And uh, once we get through this, we've got options expiration. We're going to have a whole weekend where the world can go nuts about Ebola or whatever for another few days before the markets open back up on Monday. Then we've got the four last days of core earnings ending next Thursday with just a ton of them. Uh, and then after that, we can get back to normal trading ish, although, of course, within the confines of whatever craziness is going on in the market. All right. Uh, I'll be, we'll be around Friday in the trading lab helping you out. Hope to see you there. Charts as usual brought to you by East Signal. Have a good day.